In July, when we're about 94 million miles from the sun, the world is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit warmer overall than in January, when we're 3 million miles closer. This is because there's more dry land in the northern half of the planet than the southern half, and land tends to heat up more than water. During the northern summer in July, more land is heated up than in January. So the planet gets a little warmer at this time, even though we're further from our source of heat. The closer the moon is to the horizon, the larger it looks. This phenomenon is called the moon illusion. One of the theories explaining it claims that the atmosphere plays the role of a magnifying glass, which makes the moon look bigger. In reality, if the atmosphere had a say in it, the moon would actually look smaller, not bigger. Most experts believe that the illusion is created by your own mind. It can increase the moon's size more than twice. When Earth's satellite is high up in the sky, you don't have any visual cues about how far away it is. But when it's near the horizon, you can see objects surrounding it in detail. It makes the moon look larger. But it's just one of the many theories explaining the phenomenon. By the way, you can trick yourself out of this illusion if you bend down and look the moon upside down through your legs. A day on Venus is longer than a year. It takes the planet 243 Earth days to rotate around itself, and only 225 Earth days to make a full circle around the Sun. Around 5 million years ago, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy launched a star from itself, and it's now traveling through the Milky Way 10 times faster than any other star out there. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was 3 feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hasn't finished cooling down yet. The Earth and the Moon are gradually drifting apart, as slowly as your fingernails grow. This is the flip side of our satellite's gravitational force. The Moon creates tides in the Earth's oceans. They pull back at the Moon and make it speed up. This in turn moves the satellite to a higher orbit. In prehistoric times, the Moon was way closer to our planet than it is now. Luckily, we aren't going to lose the Moon. The farther away it moves, the weaker its gravitational pull becomes. It means that soon, our planet won't be pushing the Moon away with such a force. Discovered in 2017, KELT 9b is the hottest planet we know of. Next time you're complaining about the heat on a scorching summer day, just remember that temperatures on this planet can reach 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because it orbits really close to its star, which is called KELT 9. This thing is way hotter and bigger than our sun. Experts believe that the giant star might someday evaporate the entire planet with its intense heat. Kind of a sizzling solar sauna, wouldn't you say? Everything on Earth, and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments, is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules, and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Almost three quarters of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if several decades ago they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. It got dubbed dark energy. Cold welding is a phenomenon in space when two pieces of the same metal join together without any trouble and heat. About 700 million years ago, a mysterious event that occurred may have turned Venus into the place it is now. Admittedly, astronomers can't see the surface of the planet directly because it's covered with dense layers of thick clouds. But space missions that have been sent to the hot planet found that Venus is peppered with fire-breathing volcanoes, massive mountains, countless craters, and gigantic lava plains. The temperatures on the planet are so incredibly high that they could melt lead. And the atmospheric pressure is so immense that it would instantly crush any living being reckless enough to set foot on it. If that's not enough, the atmosphere of the planet is filled with noxious clouds of sulfuric acid, which smells worse than rotten eggs. Carbon dioxide, the main component of Venus's atmosphere, 
along with the infamous sulfuric acid, create a powerful greenhouse effect. As a result, the lower atmosphere and the surface of the planet are some of the hottest places in the whole solar system. Neutron stars are the size of a small city, yet their mass is about 1.4 times that of the Sun. They're formed when massive stars die and their cores collapse in on themselves. The core continues to press in on itself until all the electrons are essentially crushed together, leaving only neutrons. This makes neutron stars one of the densest objects in the universe. In fact, a single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh a billion tons. Of course, getting this sample and delivering it back to Earth might be a difficult task, since the gravity on a neutron star is 2 billion times stronger than the gravity on our planet. Because of the effect the Moon has on Earth, our planet is gradually rotating slower and slower. And I mean very gradually, at around 17 milliseconds every 100 years. So, it will take 140 million years before the world can add a single extra hour to its day. But that also means that when the dinosaurs existed, they were only 23 hours in a day. There's very little activity going on inside the Moon. Plus, there's almost no atmosphere around. That's why scientists can trace impact craters littering the satellite surface back billions of years. While dating the craters, astronomers discovered that the Moon, along with our planet, went through a late heavy bombardment about 4 billion years ago. This event is also known as the Lunar Cataclysm. This interval lasted several hundred million years. During it, an unusually large number of asteroids collided with Earth, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. The newest scientific theory claims that Venus could have had a pleasant, stable climate for billions of years before something went wrong. Astronomers did thorough research and built a model of a virtualized Venus-like world. This model demonstrated that for most of its history, the hot planet had oceans with liquid water, adequate temperatures, and stable tectonic plates. In fact, the planet resembled Earth as it used to be at the beginning of its life. Scientists suppose that this period of Earth-like development could have lasted for more than 3 billion years. Saturn is a planet with winds that travel at more than 1,100 miles per hour at the equator. It's also the planet with the most prominent rings. The atmosphere of Saturn isn't really different from its surface, but the deeper you go, the higher the pressure becomes and hydrogen becomes liquid. Further to the center of the planet, this liquefied gas turns into metallic hydrogen. Like Jupiter, Saturn might have a rocky core with hydrogen and helium surrounding it. On the other hand, even if it is made up of rocky material, the core can still be liquid. Humans have been exploring space for over 60 years, and the effort has certainly paid off. All the planets in our solar system have now been explored, even the dwarf planets of Pluto and Ceres. Most of the exploration was done by NASA's Voyager program, which began in 1977. Voyager 1 and 2 collected information on the planets, their moons, and their unique systems of rings and magnetic fields. These twin spacecraft continue to send data back to Earth, and Voyager 1 is currently in interstellar space. The sky might appear pretty peaceful as you look at it from Earth, but the Milky Way is headed for a massive collision with the Andromeda Galaxy. Four billion years from now, you can set your alarm. These galaxies will meet, and neither will survive. Stars will be scrambled, and constellations will be undone. Eventually, the two giants will merge and form an elliptical galaxy. But according to National Geographic, our Sun and Earth will survive. Any life forms on Earth will be treated to a splendid sight as the galaxies come together. Black holes are some of the most enigmatic and sinister phenomenon in the universe. They can swallow up entire stars and planets, bending the very fabric of space and time. But what if Earth, our home planet, were to be caught in the grip of a black hole's event horizon? Hmm. What would we see before the inevitable end? Well, let's have a look-see, okie dokie. So a black hole is like the bully on the playground. You avoid them at all costs. It's a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape it. It's like Houdini in reverse. As with snowflakes, every black hole is unique. 
Each one has its own mass, spin, and charge. And they also come in different sizes, sort of like jeans. Petite, slim, regular, and husky, or something. Anyway, there are four sizes. The smallest black holes are the stellar mass kind. They're born when the massive star runs out of juice and folds in on itself. They're like the chihuahuas of the black hole world. They may be tiny, but they're feisty. They gobble up nearby matter like a hungry puppy. And even the smallest one is three times more massive than our sun. Next up, we have the middle children of this cosmic family. Intermediate mass black holes. They're too big to be born out of collapsed stars. Scientists believe that they may be created when several black holes merge into one. And even though they can't dominate galaxies, at least they can swallow up some nearby stars. Goody for them, huh? But do you know who can dominate a galaxy? The enormous monsters of our universe, supermassive black holes. They're the giants with masses ranging from hmm, millions to billions of times that of our sun. And they play a crucial role in the growth and formation of their host galaxies. Finally, there are ultra-massive black holes. Trust me, you can't even imagine the size and mass of these guys. These cosmic eldritch horrors are extremely rare, but the ones we know can devour entire galaxies like uh, Pac-Man. So, what happens if you get too close to a black hole? Or more like, what would you see in your last moments? Well, first, you reach an event horizon. It's like a point of no return, an invisible boundary that marks the edge of a black hole. And here's where things start to get really weird. For example, time starts to slow down. Not for you, for an outsider watching you from a safe distance. If you were falling into a black hole, you wouldn't feel any different. But if you were watching someone else fall into it, you'd see them slow down and eventually freeze in time, like in a paused video. As you get even closer, you would start to see some pretty mind-bending things. The gravity would cause the light around you to bend and distort, creating a sort of funhouse mirror effect. You might even see a halo of light around the black hole, known as the photon ring or jets of high-energy particles spewing out from the black hole's poles. You can actually get pretty close to a black hole without feeling any major effects. It's only when you cross the event horizon that there's no going back. Your goose is cooked. After crossing this boundary, you'd be unable to see anything. For the person watching you from the outside, it would be as if you had suddenly disappeared. Meanwhile, you might start feeling a bit stretched out like a piece of spaghetti. This is because the gravity is so stark that it's pulling you in different directions at once. There's even a scientific term for it called spaghettification. We'll cover linguinification in another video. Now that you're inside a black hole, you're taking aim at the singularity. It's a point of infinite density in its center, where all matter is crushed down to a single point. It's like trying to fit an elephant into a tiny matchbox. Everything gets squished together until it's as small as it can possibly be. Which means it's time to wave goodbye, I guess. And if all that sounds scary, here's another fun fact. Black holes are not rare at all. Actually, there's one in the center of each galaxy, including our own Milky Way. So, does it mean that we'll eventually be sucked into it? And if so, how exactly would it happen? Well, let's see. Imagine a black hole approaching our solar system. At first, it appears as nothing more than a tiny speck in the distance. But as it gets closer and closer, its gravitational pull begins to wreak havoc around. Planets start to veer off course, asteroids are flung into oblivion, and comets are shattered into a million pieces. But just like waiting for the sauces to be served in a German restaurant, the worst is yet to come. Yeah, like that joke. Soon, it inevitably reaches the Earth. First, our planet's atmosphere would be pulled toward the black hole, triggering a massive windstorm. And there would be huge waves on the oceans, the water itself being distorted by gravitational forces. Imagine seeing seas and oceans getting stretched out. Earth's magnetic field is generated by the motion of molten iron in the planet's core. But now, the extreme tidal forces of the black hole would disrupt this motion, 
causing the magnetic field to weaken and distort. All this would cause massive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, as the planet's crust and mantle were pulled apart. All infrastructure and technology would be completely destroyed. Buildings, bridges, and roads would be torn apart. Okay, let's hit the pause button. Pretty horrifying, isn't it? Nah, but don't worry. You wouldn't have even seen that much. Because you would have felt the effects of the black hole much, much earlier. Well, back to the future. We'll lose our magnetic field even before everything started to collapse. And this means not only that the weather and climate will become terrible, we'll also be exposed to extreme radiation. These gamma rays and the heat from the black hole could drastically change our planet. Say ta-ta to all our beautiful nature. At least misery loves company. We won't be the only ones affected by a black hole, which is probably even worse. As this beast engulfed the entire solar system, it would consume about everything. One immediate effect would be the disruption of the orbits of asteroids, comets, and all the other bodies. The planets would begin to deform and stretch, their surfaces warping like molten metal. The Sun itself would be affected, its surface contorting like a glob of putty. And yeah, all this is scary even to imagine. But now, breathe and relax. Because none of this will ever happen. This is the bright side, remember? <laughs> Your infinitesimal odds of winning the big lottery are even better than the Earth ever being swept into a black hole. The nearest black hole to our solar system is called Gaia BH1. Discovered by scientists in 2022, it's found in our own Milky Way galaxy about 1,600 light-years away from Earth. Gaia BH1 is about 10 times the mass of our Sun, which makes it a stellar-mass black hole. It's not very interesting on its own, but its discovery has supplied valuable insights into the behavior of these cosmic monsters. But as you can see, even the closest known black hole is over a 1,000 light-years away. They move very slowly, and they'll never get so close to our system to pose some kind of a threat. Hey, but didn't you say there's a black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy? Doesn't that mean it's going to eventually hoover up our entire galaxy? You may ask. Maybe not in that voice. Well, don't worry. The correct answer is no. The one in the center of our galaxy is called Sagittarius A star. You may remember it from that viral blurry photo that circled around the internet a few years ago. This black hole is indeed very massive and has a strong gravitational pull, like two 8th graders in love. However, it's still a small beam. It only affects objects that are close to it. The objects in the galaxy are all too big and move too fast to be pulled in by black holes. Nevertheless, they're still fascinating objects to study. Scientists are still trying to unlock the mysteries of black holes. And even though they'll never be dangerous to us, they're still a huge reminder of the incredible power of our universe. Now I think I'll turn my attention to the incredible power of chocolate. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.